Yo guys, we're on the way to the Bonnie Blue meetup. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Bonnie Blue? <laughs> Only joking guys, we were actually on the way to the Lily Phillips link up. Haha, <laughs> okay, let's get serious. Today's hair loss topic is how to use tretinoin to potentially dramatically increase the effects of minoxidil for regrowing your hair. If you're a guy going through male pattern baldness, which you probably are if you're watching my videos. And yeah, we're going to discuss this topic while simultaneously showing you my life rather than me just sitting in my room on a chair talking at you. <laughs> also, look at this, there was like these 12 year old kids, right? Me and my friends were at a bowling alley. These 12 year olds dropping some serious game, I better keep my guard up. <laughs> and my friend Izzy, we call her, we call her Isabel. The kids next to us put that as their name on the bowling board score chart. Serious game, guys, serious game. All right, anyway, back into the topic of today. So obviously minoxidil is not gonna stop your hair loss by itself, guys. I've covered this in many other videos. You're gonna need to be on a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor like finasteride or jutasteride. This is gonna deal with the most important part of male pattern baldness, which is hormones. But that is not the topic of today. We are talking about minoxidil. Even though minoxidil is not gonna stop your hair loss by itself, it is still an awesome treatment. While finasteride or jutasteride are dealing with the hormonal side of hair loss and basically stopping it in its tracks, minoxidil is a great addition alongside these because it's a potassium channel opener, which basically means that it stimulates hair growth, keeping your hairs in their growing phase for longer and spending less time resting and shedding. But as I said, minoxidil by itself doesn't grow hair. All right, so stay with me here boys. Essentially, minoxidil needs to be converted into its active form, minoxidil sulfate. Then, when minoxidil sulfate interacts with your hair follicles, they start to regrow. So, you might ask, if this is the case, then why the hell would you not just use minoxidil sulfate in the first place, right? Well, this study shows that minoxidil sulfate isn't very stable and this basically means it could just go off and not work properly. Hence why we have these 5% minoxidil solutions that you buy. These are stable and can last a pretty long time in a container. And essentially, what happens is, when you put on this topical minoxidil to your scalp, your body has these things called sulfotransferase enzymes. What these little guys do is pretty much interact with minoxidil and convert it into its active form, minoxidil sulfate, when it sort of comes into contact with it, aka only when you apply the minoxidil solution to your scalp does it become active. But here's the issue. Unfortunately, around an estimated 40% of guys don't have enough sulfotransferase in their scalps naturally to get the full minoxidil effect. Their bodies just don't naturally produce enough of it on the skin. And yeah, for this reason, there's actually a large group of guys who don't respond to minoxidil. So if you're using minoxidil and it's not working, well, is it game over for you? No, because of tretinoin. So I use this stuff on my face and that is typically what it's prescribed for. Like the normal conditions that you'd use it for are acne or anti-aging on the face. And what this thing is, is it's a vitamin A derivative, which pretty much just turns skin cells over faster and makes you look good. Like it literally brings out that fresh new layer of skin that's hiding beneath the crusty top layer. All right, but what's that got to do with hair growth? So this was the first study on tretinoin for hair loss. This was in 1986 which is literally ages ago. Like, people didn't even know that much about hair loss at this time in the scientific community. But that being said, this study had three groups. One had both minoxidil and tretinoin, one had just tretinoin, and the last one was a placebo with no medication. The interesting thing with this study was that they only used around a tenth of today's standard minoxidil dose and a relatively low dose of tretinoin, 0.025%. However, the group with both tretinoin and minoxidil still had fairly decent improvement in the hair growth. And the group with only tretinoin did have a little bit of improvement, whereas the placebo had none. Well, hello guys. Thought I would uh, hop in quickly in the middle of the video to uh, to say hi. I hope I'm explaining today's topic well and you're enjoying the video, but yeah, just thought I'd give you a little update. I started filming this uh, these clips a little while back and it is now Boxing Day and I am back home in, uh, in my hometown of Liverpool or the Wirral more specifically, but it's been a good year been a good year guys i've uh, i've been really enjoying making these videos obviously youtube isn't as big as instagram tiktok we've had the most growth on there but yeah i just wanted to say a big thank you to you all for uh, all the support because it's really uh really changed my life over the, over this past year so yeah i just wanted to hop on quickly and say just thank you all because uh it's been great so um any more topics that you want me to cover i'm planning on making a lot more youtube videos this year as well and putting a bit more effort into it so any of the questions that you want asked hair loss men's health anything to do with that more about me i uh i'd like to get to know you guys more and for you to know more about me drop them in the comments because there's gonna be plenty more videos coming but 
yeah, anyway, thank you guys for all the love and support as always. And um, back to the video. All right, now interval one plus physique update is done. Let's get back to the topic. So at the time of that previous study, the researchers believed that minoxidil and tretinoin work better together because tretinoin made the skin more absorbent to solutions. And this belief was further consolidated a little bit further down the line in this study, which used 2% minoxidil, which is still lower than the standard 5% dose that you'd get today. And they combined this with tretinoin, a higher dose of 0.05%. Now your skin has this outer layer, which which is basically a barrier to stop stuff getting in. And this study found that tretinoin helps solutions pass through it a little bit easier. And when I say a little bit easier, it was actually three times more minoxidil being absorbed through the skin barrier when it was combined with tretinoin as compared to just minoxidil by itself. Now to effectively get topical solutions to the hair follicle, you're gonna need to go typically around one millimeter below the surface of the skin, depending how thick your skin is. So by actually increasing how permeable your skin is with tretinoin, this could be really handy. And all of these studies so far use minoxidil twice a day, guys, which personally I think isn't 100% necessary because minoxidil's half-life is around 22 hours. And half-life basically just means it's at half its potency, strength, at this point in time. Which, yeah, for minoxidil, this is about 22 hours on average, and that's pretty much a whole day, to be honest. And manufacturers today have kind of just stuck with this dosage because the initial studies on minoxidil were done with twice a day usage. But I reckon if they restudied it, they might find that once a day is actually all right. Like, it might be fine. I personally just use it once a day, and I've gotten fine with that. However, if manufacturers did change the recommended dose to just once a day use of minoxidil, then you would ultimately buy less of it. And I don't know, I guess some companies might not like that. That being said, the company that I use actually agrees that you can just use it once daily and they actively encourage this, which I rate to be honest. The company is manual, as you guys probably already know, and I'm not trying to turn this into one big ad, but if you want to use the same people that I use, they're great. You can use this code for 55% off. And the great thing with manual is that you actually get unlimited access to a hair loss specialist, like a literal medical professional, all the way through your journey. And guys, this is so important. Don't just start taking medication and monitoring it yourself. Have a doctor on board with you, okay? Anyway, still on that topic, another benefit of adding in tretinoin to your minoxidil is shown in this study, which found that when comparing minoxidil by itself twice a day with minoxidil combined with tretinoin at a low dose of 0.01% just once a day, they got the same results, which is probably music to a lot of guys' ears because applying it twice a day can be inconvenient for a lot of people if you're out and about in the public during the day. All right, guys, that is the end of the trip home. Literally gonna go and get one more gym session now at this gym empowered fit it's uh probably the best gym i've ever been to to be honest uh so if anybody from empowered fit is watching this is a uh a big well done because it's a uh, pretty amazing gym anyway i'm gonna go and hit legs i think which might be a really bad idea because i'm about to drive around four to five hours back to london now uh from liverpool so might be a pretty shit idea but oh well need to train legs because my sister told me that my legs are becoming a little bit too out of proportion with my upper body so i need to uh need to build them up a little bit i think so i'm gonna go and hit them today probably do a little bit of upper body as well because my gym back home in london is uh is closed until like the third of january so let's go and get the uh the final gym session can confirm it was a shit idea. Started to get those cramps in your bum where you have to like do that thing. You know what I mean? You know the one where you're literally like driving on the motorway or the highway and your, your bum, your glute just starts twitching. You have to do that little sit up thing in the car. Like look really awkward, like you're just humping the air. Anyway, back to the topic. But yeah guys, I definitely think that tretinoin increases the permeability of your skin, which ultimately makes minoxidil absorb better. But the main reason that it works so well goes back to the sulfotransferase part of the equation. This study basically found that guys who, as I explained earlier, are non-responders to minoxidil because they don't naturally produce enough sulfotransferase. These guys were tested before using tretinoin and then five days after. And the amazing thing here, guys, is that after only five days, their sulfotransferase had dramatically increased. And yeah, that's literally after just five days, guys. And in theory, this could literally turn someone who doesn't respond to minoxidil minoxidil into a responder, making the treatment work. Now, what I believe is going on here is that the minoxidil is reacting better with
with the increased sulfur transferase levels, which then turns minoxidil into its active form, minoxidil sulfate. Now, both of these have a pretty similar Dalton rating, and a Dalton rating is basically how absorbent something is, like a topical treatment, how well it seeps into your skin. That's why a lot of topical deutasterides aren't as effective as topical finasterides, because deutasteride is actually above the 500 Dalton rule, which makes it harder to absorb. But anyway, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent there, guys. All right, one last interlude, guys, because Pat Gilly wants to talk to you one more time, and then I will finish covering up this topic. Happy New Year, guys. Um, yeah, I, uh, I thought I'd just check in and say, Happy New Year to you all. Um, I'm not gonna make this one of them super, super deep chats that a lot of, uh, a lot of people on social media have these days about sort of, you know, locking in and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I do want to say a uh, big thank you to you all for all the support over the last year. Um, this time, literally this day, a year ago, I was uh, I was pretty pretty unsatisfied uh, with my life, and I wanted to change something about it. And so I started, you know, posting these videos. YouTube hasn't blown up quite as much, but TikTok and Instagram in particular have uh, really changed my life. So just want to say, like, guys, first of all, if you're working a nine to five and you enjoy it, that's amazing. Like a lot of people shit on nine to fives that. They're not a bad thing. Like, if you have a nine to five that you enjoy and you, you know, you're happy, then that's amazing. Like, you literally know when your working hours are. You get there at nine, you work till five, and then your day is over. That is, that's great. Like, <laughs> everyone sort of puts it down, but it's not a bad thing. But if you do want to make videos, you're someone that has a passion um, for video making, and you feel like you're kind of a a duck that's sitting on the water calmly but underneath the surface you, you're paddling super hard and you're super un uncomfortable that's kind of how I felt a, uh, a year ago today if you're someone that wants to make videos then go and make videos don't be scared like I always wanted to make YouTube videos back in uh, back in high school but I was terrified like I was so scared of what people would think of me but honestly guys if you have people around you that are being negative about you making videos then Fuck them. Literally fuck them. Like, they don't matter. And finding that out sooner rather than later will probably serve you more than it will uh, put you down. So, yeah, if, you, if you're thinking about making videos, go and do it. I didn't, I didn't want to make this video like something super motivational and, you know, cop I didn't want to make a video like this. But if you're feeling like that, go and do it because it's changed my life, guys. And, um, yeah. Thank you for doing that because without you, it wouldn't have happened. So, yeah, thank you. I hope you all have a wonderful 2025. But yeah, off to the pub now, guys. Gonna go meet my friends, meet the gang. Uh, maybe there'll be some some single some single mums, some local milfs nearby. Uh, maybe the ads will be correct. Maybe not. We'll soon find out. Okay, goodbye. Have a good 2025, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share as always, and. Lots of love. Goodbye, see you in the next video. Wow, wow, wow. How inspirational from past Tom. I hope you guys are all feeling super inspired. Anyway, one thing I did want to add to this topic, guys, is that more research is needed. And also, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a guy going over the research. However, these studies that I've talked about are solid. Like, they're quality studies. None of the uh, none of the shitty bias ones that you can find a lot of the time. But all that being said, I use tretinoin myself. And it helped a ton, specifically for my hairline. I literally just mix it with some moisturizer, apply it like all over my face and my hairline, and then a couple hours later, I'll add in the minoxidil, obviously only on my hairline, I'm not putting that on like all over my face. Although you can put it on your beard and it does do a pretty good job. Men's hair loss and fitness, it's sick, I don't know if you've ever heard of it before. Wow, that's crazy. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs>
It's great advice, guys. It's really great advice. Make sure you go follow Izzy. Hashtag Izzy. Also, one last key point, guys. Make sure you only apply it at night time as it's photosensitive, so it reacts to light. Also, make sure you wear sun cream the next day because your skin is more sensitive to UV rays. Uh, but yeah, that's about everything, guys. I'll see you, see you in the next video. Goodbye.